So, I go to confession, the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, I go to that probably like every two weeks. Now, it's not because I'm like I'm super holy or anything. It's mostly because I, I mess up all the time and I got a lot of sins to confess. You know what I mean? And when I go to confession, you know, it's just like, I'm just like, just like rattle these, rattle them off. Like, like, like 45 or 50 sins. Like, yeah, I'm not that holy. <laughs> and when I go to the sacrament of confession, why I love it so much is once I confess all of those, th- those things and when I'm for- finally forgiven, it's like I'm freed. There's this sense where I have, I've been like lifted from these mistakes and these failings. I've, it's like I've been set free from something. I've been released. Like, it's like, go in peace. It's like, finally, these things are gone. Finally, I'm free. So with that being said, this understanding of freedom and this desire to do good. I mean, we all want to do good, don't we? I, don't, I mean, don't raise your hand if you don't, please. <laughs> Everyone will start looking at you. I mean, we all want to do good. And we all have this desire to do good and to not sin anymore, especially after we've gone to confession. It's like, wow, I feel so good. I don't want to do anything bad ever again. And then, you know, like 20 minutes later, you like, you stub your toe and it's just like, oh, dang it. <laughs> you know? And we fall back into old, pa- old habits. But my point for bringing this up is how we feel right after we go to confession, this sense of freedom, this sense of being freed and lifted and like set free is a good thing. And it's how we should respond. We should respond with this sense of freedom. We heard in our gospel today, Jesus said this, and it was at the very, very end. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Son of Man came not to serve, or I'm sorry, not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Now, we hear all the time, you know, like this whole like, oh, serve others, don't be served. Yeah, you guys have heard that a million times, so I'm not going to waste your time with it because you're all great at it anyways. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump to that last line, which we always just kind of overlook and pretend like it's just another thing to talk about. And to give his life as ransom for many. Now, how often do we think about that one? What does it mean to be given as a ransom, to, to receive ransom? It's like, all right, you have one person who was captured, and you have another person who was captured, and you want to make a trade, right? Well, one person for one person, that's not a, that's not a, very, that's not a very good trade. I mean, it's an even trade, isn't it? Or, let's go back into the ancient Roman times. Let's say... One, one side of the military had like 500 soldiers and the other side had the king. Don't you think, like if the king is worth so much more than all of these soldiers, right? Like the king's life is worth more. This powerful person, their life is worth more than all these lowly peasants. But that's exactly what Jesus did for us. See, we owed a debt. We owed a debt to Jesus, to God, and our creation. And Christ stood in our place. He took on the pain. He took on the price. He took on the suffering for us. He stood in our place so that we did not have to. He freed us from our sins and gave us the opportunity to experience freedom, love, mercy, eternal life. That's what Jesus did. And he did it for each and every one of us. He gave his life as a ransom for many. Because his life, no offense, 
but it was worth so much more than ours. He was God, and we're not. We're just people. But and that's the thing. If we look at it, it's like, what is going on in your head? Why would you do that? Why would you give up your life for all these people? Us. Oh, he did it out of love. Because he saw our lives as something important and worth it. Whereas like, if we were to go back in time and you have like an important king and 500 peasants, I mean, that king, he probably ain't going to give himself up, is he? But Jesus did. Jesus freely chose to stand in our place. Jesus freely chose to go through and experience what he did out of love for us, to free us from our sins, and to give us the opportunity to experience eternal life with him. So how do we respond to that? Do we respond with this great fortitude and gratitude? Do we respond with this generous thanksgiving, like, oh my gosh, seriously? Like, you did that? Like, how could I ever repay you? How do we respond to someone who gave their life as a ransom for ours? Who gave their life for our sake? Our response to that question is something that is going to determine how we live our lives. Are we going to live our lives in gratitude for that? or not. That choice is ours. How do we respond to Christ giving himself as a ransom for our lives?